Before we start building our classes or the main classes that we're going to use in our application, uh, it's worth noting that we should set up an initialization file that we include on each page. And what this is going to do is it's going to define things like, um, well, start sessions so people can log in, um, set config files so we're going to include our config uh, in this file, um, auto load classes which we'll touch on and then we'll explain what this actually does and why we do it, um, and also include the functions that we're going to use. So the sanitize function here and any other functions that you decide to include in your application. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that we want to do is obviously uh, call session start just so we uh, basically allow people to log in. Without this, we wouldn't be able to set any sessions at all. Um, so the next thing then is to create a config. Now this is going to be a global uh, variable and it's going to be an array of different config uh, settings. So for example, uh, MySQL config, so database config, um, different names for things like cookies and different names for things like sessions. And this basically just lets us keep consistency. So once we've done this, we We'll, we'll eventually create our config class, which allows us to just pull any data we want from this config and make it super easy uh, to set things up. And this again saves a massive amount of time in the future. So uh, globals config is going to be an array. So what we're going to place inside of this array? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to have this as a sort of um, storage area. So I'm going to say I want a MySQL settings um, array. I want a remember settings array and this is going to be the um, cookie names and the cookie, cookie expiry of how long we want users to be remembered for if we if they check that little box on the login page. And we also have um, session as well. So this will just be basically the session name um, and the token uh, that we use. So uh, inside of here Let's go ahead and set up our database properties. So the host is obviously going to be 127.0.0.1 or localhost, but with localhost and PDO, you're actually going to have to do a DNS uh, table lookup. So that's going to significantly uh, increase the amount of time it takes for your page to load. So please, please, please use 127.0.0.1 uh, to avoid that lookup. So username is going to be root. These are just my database settings, so yours will obviously vary. Um, password is going to be nothing. I don't have a password set on my local machine. And the database name itself is going to be LR, as we've looked at in previous parts of this series. So for remember and session, um, let's go ahead and set um, a cookie name. So we'll want to define what our, what we want our cookie name to be. I'm just going to call this hash. Um, and we also want a cookie expiry. So we want some long number of how long we want this to, um, what how long we want the uh, expiry to be. So go ahead over to Google. And if you want it to be a month, just type into Google uh, a month in seconds. And then you can add the value in here or a week in seconds, or even if you just want it to be a day or 12 hours, for example. So we've got this data here. Don't worry too much about what this actually means at the moment, because um, when we actually come to creating our, our the ability to, for a user to be remembered, we'll see why all this uh, is, is significant. So the session name here is going to be user. And that's all we're going to need to do. So we have set up a little config file there so we can uh, pull from that when we go ahead and create our config um, our config class eventually. Now the next thing to do is because we're going to be working with lots of uh, different classes, we want to auto load these in. Now auto loading is basically um, a, a quick and very very efficient way of loading in classes as and when they're required, rather than make creating and maintaining a list of requires. So traditionally what we'd do is we'd say require once just to make sure that things aren't required twice uh, and would say classes uh, config.php. We would then go and change this to cookie.php. We'd change this to 
db.php and you can see that I'm just basically including every class I've created in this classes folder. Now this is going to be a massive long list. It's going to be inefficient because we're including um, everything that we want in this init file, which we might not want to do. Um, and also it's going to be extremely difficult to maintain because what if we change the name of this DB class? Uh, we then have to go and change it here or what if we change the name of the folder, for example, or the location of the folder? We're going to have to go back and, in, uh, and update this. So we'll scrap that and instead we'll use a function in PHP called SPL auto load register. Now what this does is it allows you to pass in a function that deals with or well, that's run every time a class is accessed. What we then do is from the argument list of this function, take the class name and we can then require that. So we really are taking, uh, you know, say 10 lines of code and reducing it to just a couple. So um, I'm gonna use an anonymous function here, uh, PHP version depending, you might have to create this function outside of here, but the anonymous function is basically gonna have, as I've mentioned already, the parameter class, which represents the class we're trying to access. So for example, if down here we were to say new, uh, oh sorry, db equals new db, what this is then gonna do is call this function because we've uh, applied the auto low register and SPL by the way stands for standard PHP library. Um, it's basically just a library of everything that we, we get included with PHP. Uh, we run this anonymous function, uh, no need really to define a name. Uh, class then is DB and what we can then do is inside of here we can require once um, so traditionally we do classes forward slash db.php but we replace db with the name of the class so we just concatenate on class so now when we do something like db equals new db this is called this function's called this represents db and we require in db so we're not requiring every single class um, in this init.php file uh, unnecessarily. We're only requiring things in as we need them. So very, very useful. So um, we also then want to go ahead and just include the functions uh, that we have in our functions directory. So we're going to go ahead and require once functions forward slash sanitize.php. Unfortunately, we don't have the luxury of being able to include these uh, on the fly because they're not classes. So we just have a function list here. You could, of course, put all of your functions in one file. It doesn't really matter. Um, I prefer to separate things based on what they do. So that's our init.php file. This is going to be included on every page that we uh, create. So for example, in index.php, at the top of each page that we need, we're going to go ahead and re require in core forward slash init.php. And we do this on every single page just so we make use of all of the functionality, our config, starting up sessions, and registering um, uh, classes or loading classes as they're required, and pulling in our functions that we may or may not require. So that's our init.php file and uh, that's how we uh, create and include it.